house, but we're going to talk about six other homes that have turned into recent major historic preservation projects. Yeah. Let's get into one of our first favorites, the Mansion House. This is at York College's Knowledge Park. It's now called the Deal House uh, at Schmidt and Alt. This served as an office for paper mill. Paper mill would have been on the right. It used to employ hundreds of York residents, and soon it's going to be a space for learning for York College. Very cool. Next is the Goodrich House. William C. Goodrich, formerly enslaved and later a successful York County businessman, lived here with his family. And if you visit now, you'll see the spaces they had freedom seekers by night and hosted fellow capitalists by day. And if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see us interview William Goodrich himself, mm -hmm. and we talk about the house. Number three is the Mifflin House. Like the Goodrich House, this is an 18th century farmhouse in eastern York County, and it hid enslaved African Americans who were trying to escape. They were then ferried across the river on their way to Philadelphia. This is going to be the site of a new cultural center that walks down to the river, and this will be featured in one of our upcoming episodes. Yes, it will. Next, we have the Hoke House. So the 1750s era house in Spring Grove was under threat. Rudders owned the property, and they were granted a demolition permit by the borough, but a committee has been working since February of last year to preserve it, relocate it, and renovate it. Finally, the Creek House. This is in Railroad, Pennsylvania. This is from the 1880s. It was used as an auction house and they used to manufacture ice cream. Brian and Rochelle Lazaro, they're the current owners. They renovated it and turned it into a beautiful Airbnb. Another episode that Dami and I filmed when we talked specifically about the railroad. Right. So in many of these cases, York Countyans are seeing how historic preservation can be a part of our economic strategy. It's really been uh, the right people doing the right thing at the right time. For example, Governor Wolf dedicated more than $169 million to fund projects like this across the county. And you can read more on Jamie and Jim's website, Witnessing York. And one thing I want to point out is while we are preservationists, we also are a little bit more... Um, economic in that we don't think that every building should be saved right. um, ever so it makes us think about what buildings are worth saving and what mm -hmm. buildings aren't worth saving so if you have any comments below if you have any buildings that you think that should specifically be saved because like our title says we have to do something before history is only in books right uh, yeah right. so comment below if you have other examples yeah I'm interested to see what people say yeah so let's look at an example of a building that didn't make the cut and this is the Patterson farm project um, there was a property in the Stortstown area that no longer exists, and it was destroyed for a housing development. Because the house was being dismantled anyway, Dr. Donald Leinbaugh, a professor of the University of Maryland, conducted an archaeological study there. This house was built in the late 18th or very early 19th century, and it survived until the 21st century. Um, and it offered us an opportunity to understand how the occupants over the centuries modified the spaces to accommodate their needs. As the building was taking down, they studied the layers, uncovering hidden features one by one. And this is from, I took a screenshot of a YouTube video that they made of it, which is pretty cool, one of his presentations. Mm -hmm. And for example, he said that you could see the indoor plumbing when it became common across the county in the installation of the bathroom, or I thought this was interesting, when they started whitewashing the internal facing logs oh. as a form of decor. Very cool. Yeah. So my house was built in 1964, and before it was built, that entire area was a dump. So anytime it rains or it snows and the earth gets moved around, like old bottles come up, That's like cool. glass bottles and stuff. And we've had people come out to um, metal detect to mm. find things. Now they're not finding anything like amazing, yeah. but just fun <coughs> things. But like what happens if we would dig up below your house? What would we find? Oh, so my house was built in 1931. And when we renovated it, we ripped out all the walls, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and we found the old um, knob, um, electric, electric knobs. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, which is cool. And then my husband thinks I'm really creepy for this, but I found um, a mouse skeleton. Oh. Like, <laughs> wow, judgment well, much? No, okay. I'm just wondering what you did with it, <laughs> So it was, like, up in, like, the rafters, and I, like, brought it down. It was this tiny little skeleton, and it's so cute and, like, so cool. So I kept it in, like, a little glass jar. <laughs> and I kept um, um, bird skeletons, too. And I don't know. I just think it's... <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> like... her face. She's like... It's okay. like another version of taxidermy. <laughs> yeah, I think it's beautiful. We also just went to the Muter Museum this past weekend. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, I don't know. I just think that stuff is really fascinating. So that's what I uncovered through okay. the walls. Um, but that's really it. I was just... I wasn't sure where you were going with it. <laughs> like, I found a mouse skeleton. I'm like, okay. 
So thank you for tuning in for us, our episode tonight, episode 4.1, getting into wow. our fourth season. We want you to walk away with these takeaways from the Peter Wolf House. One is that this is one of the oldest houses in York County. Yeah. So when you drive past it next time, try to imagine yourself in the 1750s. There's no pavement, no electricity. There's no rush to like really get anywhere. You're on your wagons. You're going through a central part of York, which is pretty cool. Next is that Peter Wolf was um, really an exceptional um, man for his time. Mm-hmm. He was um, a hero fighting in the Revolutionary War. He was a businessman. He built a church. He left a legacy for his family. Mm-hmm. But like we said, this is not normal. Most people did not live this way. He was rich, rich. Yes. <laughs> which is which is beautiful. But don't think that you drive past the house and you're like, oh yes, that's that's back in the day. However, yeah. your county and live, that is not mm-hmm. the case. And then finally, we're, a house like this takes serious work and a lot of sacrifice with investments and with time to make it look this beautiful. And so we very much are appreciative of Jan and her husband yes, and other people absolutely. who are preserving history. And there are more houses that need saved. So hopefully a viewer in here can find or get involved and just honestly spread the history so people know how important this house is. So if it's ever up for demolition or whatever, we can you right. know, fight against it. We know the history. Absolutely, but don't go away yet because we're going to come back in a few minutes with Jan Watt, the current owner of the Peter Wolf House, and have an interview with her. And then our next episode is going to be February 22nd at the Redland Library. We're going to talk about books and authors from York County, yep. and it's open to the public, so you'll be able to come. So stay tuned for more information, and we'll be back with Jan. Save the date. Yes. All right, see you later. Bye.